Good. A lot of people think, but please say good evening to Helen. Say hello, Helen. Hi, Helen. No. <laughs> Don't be so stupid. <laughs> now, it's Chinese New Year coming up, and... <coughs> excuse me. And it, it's the year of the rabbit. Now, Helen, are you from China? No, I'm from Taiwan. Taiwan! <laughs> Do people, do people think that Taiwan and China have similar years? Yes, we celebrate Taiwanese New Year, which is the same as Chinese New Year. Oh, how terribly informative. <laughs> now, is it also a rabbit year in Taiwan? Yes. Oh. <laughs> now, that's what we call in America <laughs> coincidence. <laughs> That's not a coincidence, is it? Because a coincidence is a chance event that was unlikely to happen. But this is an event that happens exactly as it always does every year. Am I right, Helen? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> now, may I ask you also, Helen, is that a Taiwanese name, Helen? Yes. <laughs> A Taiwanese name, Helen. Then. Uh, no, it's an American name. <laughs> so what you're telling me then is that Helen of Troy was a <laughs> American. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, I don't know much about your big city ways, but I'll tell you this: I think the name Helen is in fact a Greek. Yes, it's a Greek name. Is it really? Yes. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> are you, do you live in America now, or are you visiting from Taiwan? I live in America now. Oh, that's nice. Which part? San Diego. <laughs> do you know it's still legal to have sex with a rabbit in San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. It just things seem to have taken a very odd turn. <laughs> anyway, look. Uh, how do you say Happy New Year in Taiwanese? 新年快乐. But that's Chinese. <laughs> Established that. Are you? Do you know? Even know anyone in Taiwan? Yes, I was born there. Oh, what well, are you? Do you don't remember what I was saying? Happy New Year, then. Is it a different language? Yes, Taiwanese is different from Chinese. Oh, but you, are you a bit nervous because you're talking to a rabbit on television? <laughs> you're telling me that's still legal to have sex no, with no, rabbits. It's just <laughs> It's a joke! It's not true! Oh, good. It is true. <laughs> anyway, Happy New Year, Helen, and I Happy wish you all the best for the New Year. <laughs> we'll be right back, everyone. The Late Night Show with Craig Ferguson. Sponsored by the all-new, 100% reinvented Ford Explorer. Drive one.
everybody. Thanks very much. Extremely convincing in every way. <laughs> you have now qualified to go and see The Price is Right. <laughs> That's really what it's about. We don't really have an audience. We just test them here. Are they, are they enthusiastic? Will they do anything for a cheap product? <laughs> they will. Then in you go. And by cheap product, I mean myself, of course. <laughs> Well, I don't mean you. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody, isn't it? It is. We are counting down. We're counting down to the Super Bowl. It's the big countdown to the Super Bowl. Did you know that one of the cast members from Glee is singing during the pre-game show? <laughs> I think that's great. It's part of Fox Television's master plan to get more gay people to watch sports. <laughs> Super Bowl, eh? <laughs> now, the Super Bowl, of course, is in Dallas, but Dallas is facing... This is true. Dallas is facing a terrible shortage of strippers. <laughs> what the hell is happening in this country? <laughs> it's true. Exotic dancers are in short supply in Dallas. All the strip clubs are desperately trying to recruit new dancers, which makes me very happy, because I am out of here! <laughs> Time to make some real money, bitches. <laughs> real money, one dollar at a time. <laughs> Might take maybe 50 cents. <laughs> It's a great day for the wild man of Broadway, Nathan Lane. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Nathan. Uh, that's how you do it on Broadway. That's it. Not only Nathan Lane's birthday, but Morgan Fairchild's birthday. Now, Morgan Fairchild and Nathan Lane are very different, of course. One is a sexy thing I used to fantasize about in the 1980s, and the other one's Morgan Fairchild, of course. <laughs> Lawyer, please. Well, I, I was gonna, but if you have... Fine. It's a big day today, not just for Morgan Fairchild and Nathan Lane. It is a big day for China. It is Chinese New Year today. Right. <laughs> Listen, if you thought Thanksgiving was a bad day to travel, then it's nothing compared to Chinese New Year, because... Knock it off, all right? <laughs> anyway, it's a huge travel day in China is what I'm saying. I read this today. 230 million people in China will travel for Chinese New Year. Yay! <laughs> Don't! 230 million, uh, you know, that's a lot of people. That's like 1% of the Chinese population right there. <laughs> Anyway, Happy New Year, China, or as I should say, Zinyan Kyai Lai, which I think means Happy New Year. <laughs> it might mean I like to kiss men. <laughs> I can't remember. I can. <laughs> anyway, today's the beginning of a brand new year. It's the year of the rabbit. Do we have a graphic for the year of the rabbit then? Year of the Rabbit, so everyone start humping. <laughs> I love the fact that this year is uh, named after the animal best known for having a lot of sex, because actually last year was the, the, the year of the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> was that a Tiger Woods joke, Craig? Might have been. <laughs> I was born in 1962, which is also the year of the tiger, but it doesn't make sense, because I was raised by a pack of wild ferrets. <laughs> I went back home to celebrate New Year's with the ferrets who raised me. I always do that. Do we have a picture of me with my wild ferret? You know, I wasn't really raised by ferrets. <laughs> Some of these people are drunk. Anyway, I'm glad it's the year of the rabbit. I think it's going to be the bestest rabbit year ever. Some people think that rabbits are rodents because they look a bit rodenty, but they're not. They're a different species. They're bigger, they have more teeth, and they poop a lot more. It's kind of like how Chloe is different to the other Kardashians. She's, she's like bigger, bigger teeth, more poop. 
<laughs> I'm a pretty one too, ain't I? <laughs> oh, Craig, you rotten bastard. Oh, come on. Anyway, not only do I think Chloe's adorable, I think rabbits are adorable. I love the way their ears perk and their noses twitch and their feet make little keychains. <laughs> Do you, do you know this is true about rabbits? This is actually true. Do you know a rabbit's scrotum is in front of its penis? <laughs> How did that even work? A scrotum in front of its penis? I tell, listen, I found that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Call me Bugs Bunny. Anyway, this is, this is going to be a great year. Chinese New Year is always fun to watch the parades. They do, you know, the dragon dance, the traditional Chinese dance where the people carry a big dragon on poles. Do we have a picture of it? There you are, like that. Look at that. It's awesome. We tried to get one of those dragons tonight, but we can't afford it. <laughs> could barely afford two interns and a used horse costume. <laughs> and I say used because we didn't buy it new. It had been used for some weird stuff. <laughs> More, please. No, not more. It's actually commercial break time. Achy, breaky time. <laughs> Is that a, who sang that? Billy Ray Cyrus? Miley? Bob Saget? No, Bob Saget didn't. Bob Saget doesn't sing anything. Bob Saget just tells jokes and shows his penis. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, no, he does in his nightclub act. You didn't know that? I made it up. It's not true. But if it was true, wouldn't that be scandalous? Are you as turned on as I am? You bet I am. The idea of Bob Saget coming out with his rip-roaring humor and his wiener hanging out, that would be awesome. Meow. You're talking about Bob Saget doesn't have a cat? Bulls. <laughs> Well, he does have a cat, then? Six robot. <laughs> You're freaking me out, then. Stop that. When did you start saying sex robot? Say it again. Six robot. Now, now say it again and pull my hair a little bit. Are you as turned on as I am? Maybe a little more. <laughs> Given the fact I'm organic. I like cherry lipstick. <laughs> I just realized that for the last minute and a half I've been talking to an appliance. <laughs> uh -huh. You may applaud because you've been watching it. <laughs> I think we all feel a little birdie. Birdie? I meant, I meant to say dirty. I meant to say dirty, but I said birdie. It was one of those Freudian penises. Oh, slip! <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the big uh, Chinese New Year show, the big uh, Taiwanese New Year show. It's also uh, the New Year in uh, Vietnam. So to all our Vietnamese viewers, um, <laughs> Jok Man Nam Nhai. <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, is it the Year of the Rabbit in, uh, in Vietnam too? Pretty much. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Um, <laughs> time is it, Jeffrey Peterson? Time to man up and tweet down. <laughs> yeah, let's do that then. <laughs> Chicken Vindaloo is good to eat. My name is Scooter. I'll fix your computer. I'm a happening guy and a dope troubleshooter. When you call tech support, you'll be talking to me. I got more places than Mahatma Gandhi. And emails. Welcome back from the jingle, everybody. Welcome back. All right, this is from uh, Dylan in Duluth in Minnesota, uh, who says, Dear Craig, what's the most annoying song to get stuck in your head? Oh, I don't know, but I know the one to get it out. The way, the, always the way, that whenever I've got a song stuck in my head, the way I get it out is I imagine, it's a small world after all. <laughs> that 
That's like the neutron bomb of songs in your head. If you remember that song, everything else disappears and that song remains. It's a small world after all. <laughs> Doesn't anyone find that a bit sinister? <laughs> a bit sinister when even when I'm there and the children and the sunshine and everyone's going around and they're like hey, it's a small <laughs> am I in trouble for saying that slightly un-american thing to say isn't it sorry <laughs> this is from Mary in Brisbane Australia is it also Australian New Year <laughs> it's year of the dingo huh? that's right um, Mary says, Good day, Craig. I can't stop burning my fingernails. My girlfriend says it's disgusting. What do I do to stop? Try imagining it's a small world. After all. That's how I stop drinking and taking cocaine. <laughs> all right, this is from Stephen in Little Rock in Arkansas. Bill Clinton's from Little Rock in Arkansas. He's got the library, the, the, the Clinton Library is there now. It's got the largest collection of porn in the United States. <laughs> Uh, Stephen says, Dear Craig, I found out my new job at a law firm has casual Friday. What's appropriate attire? Bikini. Uh, this is from Joel in Portland, Oregon, who says, uh, Hi Craig, I have cable and still watch your show. Does that make me an underachiever? No, it makes you a idiot. Well, you, you could be watching stuff that where, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> CBS cares. Um, this is from Dave in Bismarck, North Dakota. North Dakota is one of my favorite Dakotas. <laughs> Dave says, hi, Craig, I'm dating a girl that is a vegetarian, but all of my favorite restaurants don't have veggie options. What do I do? Embrace the cucumber. <laughs> By the way, Embrace the Cucumber is also the name of a website that I... Uh... <laughs> All right, uh, this is from Gus in Arlington, Texas, who says, uh, Dear Craig and Jeff... Oh, this is for you as well, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, I'm running for class president with the promise of getting robotics as a new class elective choice. Do I have your support? Six robot. <laughs> I think that means yes. Uh, however, you do not have my support. I think robotics is a mistake, and I think all robot engineering technology should stop. Now, we've clearly come too far. <laughs> Or perhaps not. <laughs> All right, uh, the last one here. This is from Aletta in New Orleans in L.A. Oh, Louisiana. New Orleans in Louisiana. It would be nice to have New Orleans in L.A. At least it would be some crikey. Atmosphere in this town. <laughs> You know, I, I would like that, some Cajun environment in, uh, in Los Angeles, that'd be better than the Tootsie Fruitsie. Strip malls, for as far as you can see. <laughs> anyway, uh, Aletta, New Orleans, which is of course in the great state of Louisiana, said, uh, Dear Craig, every day around 4 p.m. I start to nod off at work. Do you recommend energy drinks or caffeine pills? No, 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 no. There's an easy way around this. Do not take heroin at 3 p.m. <laughs> You're just adding trouble on top of trouble. If you remove the heroin from the equation, you won't need to take uppers around about four o'clock. Or if it's not heroin, perhaps it's too large a lunch. So maybe cut down on the calories and add a line of crystal meth or something right about. CBS cares. I'm kidding. I'm in no way advocating the use of illegal drugs, or even legal drugs, except when they're prescribed by a doctor in the correct amount. <sighs> have I become too corporate? I think I have. Well, in this year of the rabbit, I'm going back to my roots.
My rabbit roots. <laughs> nah. Well, that's, uh, that's about all the time we have for emails. I'm having an awkward pause with myself. It's a new thing I'm trying. <laughs> Do you know what's weird? Like, kind of sitting quietly like this kind of sexually excites me. Are you as turned on as I am? I don't know. How turned on are you? <laughs> are you a sex robot? Sex robot. Sex robot. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Sex yeah. robot. Meow. Oh, yeah. All right. Balls. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you take a break. We'll be right back. My uh, first guest tonight has uh, got a new uh, show, which is on Sunday on uh, uh, Showtime. That's, that's cable, isn't it? <laughs> Crikey, what are you doing here, then? <laughs> Take a look at this. Hey, look at you all spiffy. Yeah, I got that custody hearing today. Oh, good luck with that. Ah, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll just give the judge a couple of how you doings. <laughs> hey, are we going to have catchphrases? Catchphrases? Ah, oh, no, they're, they're awfully cheesy. Mm. Yeah? Tell that to my house in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Matt LeBlanc, everybody, Matt LeBlanc. It's great to be here. I've never been here before. Oh, no, I, love I know. Your show. We've never had Big you here. Fan. I'm very excited that you've you've been here. You're on cable. You're on the Showtime show. Yeah, we can I swear like yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Do it you like, man. <laughs> did you know, by the way, Le LeBlanc is uh, French? Yeah, oh. I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it the year of the rabbit in France? Is it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, tell me, in the show, you play yourself? Well, it's easier that way. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's like they used to do with Tony Danza. They would always give his character the name Tony so that he wouldn't get confused when yeah, they were doing which, it today. He knew which lines to yeah, say. That's right, like Tony. <laughs> that's me. That's yeah. me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, it's this like, kind of strange, bizarre version of myself. Yeah, I kind of like it, like you're not as cheesy. I'm not as strange and bizarre. I'm not strange and bizarre enough. In well, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're pretty weird. I am. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> It was that, I don't want to alarm you, but I think that was English people in the show with you there was. as well. Oh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Basically, the, sh the show is... I'm sure the show. you know what you're doing. No, no. What's that about? No, I don't know what the hell. No, no, no. So the, the, the premise of the show is it's an English show being remade in America, right? Right, yeah. It's about a hit English show. Like, you know, they have shows like The Office and right, stuff right. that are big hits in the UK, and then they bring them here. So it's a fictitious hit show there that they, the networks talk the writers, a husband and wife English couple, write the show into bringing the show to America, promise them the world, and one by one break every promise, including uh. the promise that they can keep their lead actor, who's played by um, Richard Griffiths, this older English Yeah, I know actor. Richard Griffiths. He's a very, very distinguished old British actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And they fire him, and they uh, they hire me <laughs> to replace him. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, that's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of it being about the headmaster of a boys' academy, you know, verbally dexterous headmaster, it right. becomes, we make it about a hockey coach. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> this, that happens, you know, sometimes. I mean, I came sure. here to do a sort of Charlie Rose type show. <laughs> nah, it's all right. How are you doing, anyway? Good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. yeah. What have yeah, you been thanks. up to then? Yeah, you, uh, do you have a house in Malibu? No. Oh. <laughs> it's nice out there, though. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice. Do you ever go out there and do the, the, the surfing? In Malibu? Yeah. Nah, I'm not really much of a water guy. Really? What, do you like yeah. that dust? I do. 
I like dirt. Dirt more dirt. than water. Water, I just feel like bait when I'm out there. Yeah, there. a little bit. Yeah, I, I like don't that. Maybe on it, but in it, I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm. It's nice on the boat with a, you know, a cocktail in your hands, having a good time. Yeah, the only trouble is, no, if I get on a boat, then, and it's fine, I can be on the boat, but if I have a cocktail, then I have to go to the jail. <laughs> Fair enough. So what do you do then? Do you, uh, on the land, do you ride horses? Do you... Yeah, I have a, I have a cattle ranch that I really? bought a while ago. Yeah, I've had it about 10 years now, and, um... Do you, do you punch the cattle? Yeah, well... <laughs> slap them, Sometimes, if you, you know, if they get out of line, you gotta <laughs> slap them around. Right? Yeah. Don't you move at me! Tootsie fruits! <laughs> You'd make a great cowboy. Yeah, right? no, 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 I got all the lingo, right? Do you actually do that? Do you put on the saddle and, you know, ride around and then get on a horse and go around the... Uh... Yeah, punch cows. Yeah, really? I mean, honestly, for, for realsies, you've got a big uh, kind of giant horse cattle thing and... For realsies? Yeah. What does that mean? You know, for realsies, <laughs> like, you know, really. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to brand them, burn that thing on their butt, and then no you got to cut their nuts off and put those on the barbecue and watch all the cowboys eat them. They eat the testicles of yeah, the cow? Rocky Mountain Oysters. Everybody's heard of that, right? I have heard of that. Actually, their Ted Turner has a restaurant in Denver, and I had Rocky Mountain Oysters, and then I went to the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> This is, uh, That's what these, that is. That's yeah, about that, what they look well, like. Well, these are kangaroo testicles, though. For uh, Carrie Fisher was here. She'd been in Australia, and she uh, brought me... So do these look a bit like the kind of testicles you're dealing with? No, they're about as big as that mug. They're a little bigger. <laughs> well, are you as turned <laughs> on as I am? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Very highbrow conversation. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm enjoying this. It's the way this the, the show kind of goes. So you you do you ride around and what else you got? You got you have the car collection. You got a big TV star. You got to have a car collection. You got a couple cars, more bikes than cars. Oh yeah. really? More bunch of dirt bikes and stuff. It's fun because the cows cut the grass, mm -hmm. so then you can see where all the rocks and logs and everything that you could crash are. So right around there, it's like riding on a golf course, but nobody's shooting at you. <laughs> Oh, because they would shoot you for riding around on a golf course on your dirt bike. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite kind Although. of... Although... Well, <laughs> no. I think it's quite a kind of tough thing to do. Are you quite a tough person? Are you quite kind of, you know, macho? Uh, no, I'm no more macho than you are, I guess. Oh, man, Justin Bieber's more macho than I am. Oh, well, yeah, we're out of time here. We're out of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I got armba! Uh, do you, uh... Mouth organ or awkward pause? I like to play with the balls. <laughs> <laughs> awkward pause. No, awkward no, pause. no. Uh, ball playing is not usually an option that I. Uh, <laughs> but I think I think you could incorporate, you know, the scrotum fondling with a bit of an awkward pause. Sure. All right. So I'll be awkward about you playing with my kangaroo skirt. <laughs> guest is the tech columnist from the for the uh, New York Times <laughs> he's also uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna regret that he's also the host of Nova's making stuff series which airs Wednesdays on PBS yeah <laughs> take a look at this so now that we understand gecko adhesion can scientists match it start the gecko Pretty impressive. And especially when they show me a piece that supports 45 pounds. I start having my own ideas.
That's awesome, actually. <laughs> David Pogue, everybody. David Pogue. Thank you so much, and uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Do you celebrate the Year of the Rabbit? You know, I celebrate Lithuanian New Year. How come it's always Chinese? You never hear about Estonian New Year or Canadian New Year? Oh, on the contrary. If you come here on Estonian New Year, you'll see the big <laughs> celebrations. <laughs> no, I feel bad. Hey, um, that's uh, for real? The uh, You can make gloves that go up the, the gecko... Technology? So they're working on it. The, the point is that these scientists, funded by the military, inevitably, right. is trying to say, look, this gecko is the freakiest animal in nature. The feet are not sticky. Right. Mean, if you felt it, it would feel like this table. But the thing can hold 250 pounds, this little tiny gecko. If I was to hang on to a gecko, I, it would hold me up? Well, <laughs> no, but yeah, come probably. On, yeah. probably. <laughs> Really? It would, so the military would love to come up with some way to do that artificially, and gecko gloves or whatever. Or just use real geckos, because that would also be adorable. <laughs> that would be adorable, geckos and little uniforms climbing. Or, or just have our guys clutch the torsos of the geckos. Hold on to the geckos. Rustle up your geckos, man, we're going in. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's PBS, which is great, because there's no commercials on the series. Oh, yeah. And, and you can see the whole thing on the Nova website if you missed it. But the, the thing about it is, I wanted to be more sort of funny and entertaining. You won't see the best line. We were interviewing the scientist who knows about geckos. Right. And this gecko is crawling on me, and he's right here. And I go, it just told me I could save 15% or more on my car insurance. <laughs> and they cut it. Oh, come on. Yeah, well, you see, because they don't like commercials. I see. No, no. But geckos do. That's true. Now, what else have you got from the... Uh... <laughs> What else uh, is, is uh, the, you know, the, the breaking technology you're excited about? Well, so this, this series is about material science, and I've never heard of it either, but it's like this right. blend of biology and physics and chemistry, and it's what stuff is made of, you know, like we had the Iron Age and the Stone Age, but now these scientists are doing crazy stuff, spider silk that's stronger than steel, shark skin, all this nutty synthetic... Shark skin? Yeah, shark skin. Well, like a nice shark skin suit or actual shark skin? <laughs> the actual shark... Actually, I believe you and I have both been swimming with the sharks. I have been swimming Did with the sharks. Did you see the, the one with the funny eye? That was my favorite one. Was this in the Bahamas? It was. Yeah, I yeah. remember that shark. Bitey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you feed them from the little I thing? I did, yes, did indeed. Oh, I so didn't get chain mail. The, the whole crew had chain mail but me. I'm like, is there some reason why? I'm like the, the guinea pig. But, but the shark skin is amazing because this scientist down there saw that nothing grows on shark skin, not barnacles or algae or even bacteria. What? Yeah. <laughs> on shark skin. Well, no one knew. So the guy looks at it under, under the electron microscope and he sees that the shark's skin is covered with these infinitesimal little grooves and channels and like one bacteria can wedge in between but it sends like a text message to the other bacteria that says there's no room for a colony. Whoa, Go whoa, somewhere whoa, else. Wait, wait. Bacteria have text messaging? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort That's of a bigger story than the <laughs> <Icaramba>. shark. <laughs> Telling me that bacteria can send messages to other bacteria? It's, it's kind of a metaphor. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, cause <laughs> that would be amazing. You could have the bacteria go in first and then send a message back to the geckos saying, all right, we cleared the way, and then everybody comes in. <laughs> But what is cool is the guys made artificial shark skin now that they're spreading out in hospitals where, of course, infections are this huge problem. Wow. And now anything you put this special plastic on, like light switches or your, your bed rails, nothing will grow. No bacteria. The, you can't I have just... a couple of things where I wouldn't like bacteria to grow. <laughs> That's, that's very... Now, how come you got involved in all of this? What's your background? Are you a scientist? <laughs> no. I think it was basic, basically a clerical error. I have no idea what I was... Much I'm, like I ended up here. Exactly. Right, okay. <laughs> you must work for CBS, too. No, I didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm a technology guy. I review tech for the New York Times, and for some reason I was chosen for this science show. I guess they used to have scientist hosts interviewing the scientists, yeah. and they would just start talking jargon, like, yes, the free module is the diopter of the Mirmeco file, and the, the host would go, oh, yeah. Right. And the audience is like, what? You know, so yeah, yeah. they wanted someone to <laughs> they did it. They translate. did it right there, just when you did that. They were like, <laughs> exactly. <"What?" laughs> but so I guess they wanted someone who could sort of translate, used to translating for the audience. But they, right. they wanted it really 
experiential. They, they didn't want like labs. They, I mean, in the last 18 months, I went hang gliding, swam with the sharks, fired an AK-47, landed on a, an aircraft carrier, went riding in a demolition derby car with no seatbelt. Wait, wait, what's scientific about that? I mean, it's <laughs> awesome fun, but why would it be scientific? It's all about ratings. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. Crikey. <laughs> I stopped giving a crap about that years ago. <laughs> you know, the minute I found out that when Jay Leno got uh -oh. canned and he was the number one in the late night wars, I was like, clearly having a big rating works against you. <laughs> so, that's when I sneak in. You're doing an excellent job. Thank you very much. Yes. But how did you write the tech for the New York Times? Did it, uh, were you a scientist before that? Is that why you did it? No, that too is sort of a mistake. I used to be a Broadway conductor. I understand you have a theatrical career as well. Well, only in a metaphorical sense in that I'm sort of gay. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia says you did theater in London. I did, so I did theater, yeah. No, yeah. I did a little and bit And everything theater. Wikipedia says is automatically true. True. So. My third nipple and I play the harp. <laughs> but the, the, you, you, you were a Broadway conductor? I was a musical director for 10 years. And then what happened was this software came out that let you play on your keyboard and it would write the notes out for you. It never happened before. So you're a musician then? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I see. I was a music major. Yeah, what am I doing writing te about technology? Yeah, don't tell anyone that I'm really a musician. That would no, look bad. No, but that's interesting because the, the crossover, the music is so technologically advanced now and there's so much, though, it actually kind of pulled you in that direction. That's right. Yeah. So I, I wanted this music software, and it was $1,000, and this computer club newsletter editor said, you know what you do? Write a review of it, and you get to keep the software. So I'm like, ah. that's the job for me. So. <laughs> I think I'd like to write a review of some new cars. <laughs> <laughs> could I do that? Like, if I say a car's good, could I get the car? No, you know, no, I can't. If, if you hadn't spit, I would have given your name to the New York Times guys. They would have been happy to have no, you. They, they they no, they, would, they wouldn't let me anywhere near the New York Times. I didn't go to college. <laughs> You gotta have a college degree to write for the New York Times, man. I was a music major. What am I doing writing about technology? Yeah, that's true. You're right. All right, I'll take a column, New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> but the show looks fascinating, though. I, I really, I, I'm very, very interested in looking at. When's it on again? It's on a Wednesday nights, and, and there are only four episodes. It's one hour each. By the way, funded by our government. Your tax dollars at work, so they, they do good work. That government. so you work for me technically. <laughs> Indeed I do. Can I scratch your shoulder blade, sir? Um, no, uh, so... Lower. <laughs> this is a racy show on It's discovered. a pretty racy show, yeah. It's late at night. Nobody's watching. So, uh... <laughs> no, it's good. Listen, the show is fascinating. It's really lovely to meet you. David Pogue, everybody. <laughs> If you're going to be in the L.A. area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 323-570-0059. I feel terrible, David. I didn't offer you an awkward pause or a mouth organ. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. I know. I felt really bad, man. <laughs> but the, luckily, this is the part of the show that really nobody watches. So, <laughs> so awkward pause or mouth organ? If you don't mind, I'd, I'd love to see the mouth organ. See it, or, <laughs> see it or play it? Well, I don't actually know how to play, but there's got to be a... All right, go then. Oh, All it's right, a that's, Steinway. That's a yeah, it's a, it's a brand new one. <laughs> So the, we can the, end the show like this. The power switch is... There's no power switch. This is old school, baby. You blow. before, take and blow that organ wisely. <laughs> David Pogue, good night, everyone.